Welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. I'm here on my own today without Dan, who's decided to go on his holly bobs. However, uh, we've got two fantastic guests lined up for you today. Uh, we have got James and Jason that make up the Sizzle Show, which is a Instagram live every week show uh, talking about the barbecue community. These guys are hilarious. They are so well connected within the barbecue community and they just do everything to make the community a better place. And it's been an absolute, it was an absolute pleasure to catch up with both of them uh, and, and actually find out a little bit more about them personally. So without further ado, here's the Sizzle Show team. Welcome to the show, James, Jason. Uh, it's fantastic to have you on the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. Um, really excited to talk to you both actually the sizzle show is something that i've been following myself and dan for a long long time and i'm keen to learn more about what the sizzle show is about so welcome to the show and tell, tell us more please no oh and thanks very much for having us um yeah, yeah you say it's a long time right but th this is also the crazy bit is that I, we were just looking back at the calendar just recently is we didn't start until late october um last year so it wasn't even during the first couple of lockdowns that the Sizzle Show has been about. But I don't know how you feel, Court, but it feels like it's been, been in my life for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a long, it has been a long time because I suppose if we look back at James, this is what came out of the whole mysterious cartel, right? That's what... <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to break the mystery. Oh. We're going to break the mystery tonight on that, so we are. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, let's touch base upon this, right, kick it off right now, um, this mysterious cartel. I think cartel, you know, that I mean. Was, it was a crazy bit of, of banter and people kind of gathering together, I think, talking about their experiences, talking, I think, in the same way that this podcast does really, really well, in sharing what they've done and what they've done wrong, um, and asking for advice, asking a, a group of select people, how do I do this? Have anyone tried this particular element? Yeah, I think the whole cartel came about when I spoke to Hamster or Paul. Uh, Paul Ives about, when Paul spoke about getting maybe 10 or 12 guys to cook the same dish on one weekend. No charity was involved. Yeah. It was quite, just quite literally, can we get 10 guys to cook the same side, side, same sort of dish on a, on a particular Saturday or Sunday? And we right. reached out to like, Pretty guys now. Oh yeah, great idea. I remember that actually. There was, you know, so I think at the beginning there was like just a handful of you, right? Maybe like yeah. four. And then there was the call out of saying, if there's anyone that was is free or would like to join us, please do so. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I want in that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me try. This seems awesome. Um, and I was just starting as well, right? Um, yeah, it, and then we told people they were going to go live, and people went, oh, no way, we can't go live. No. We're, running, we're, we're, we're not, we don't have spaces to go live. We're not, <laughs> we're not confident, and it just, I think the whole Sizzle Show, it did build from that point because it got myself and James, and it got the whole, that's why I suppose, for me, it got the whole, it was the start of it, the whole kind of, our, our barbecue family coming together, the, the community kind of growing into that kind of shape. Where ten guys turned to twenty guys turned to fifty guys at the end, it was crazy. So just yeah. to clarify, it's uh, uh, it's a barbecue cartel and not you know not necessarily one that's traditionally you know uh, associated <laughs> with uh, drugs and <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> just to clarify, yeah, just so everyone just <laughs> bit of money laundering, you know, no, sure. Topic. No, I mean like <laughs> I think the name just came about just because it was it was just a sticky name for a group of people, right? That, um, that's it, and it can't, they, yeah, they care about because of. I think the name, came, the name just kind of came out for a laugh and people took it into a new context that it was actually a whole cartel. I mean, the end of it was really was, it was a lot of guys you see live today but in a WhatsApp group just, just try to learn, I suppose, teach each other about yeah. different techniques and learn from each other because there was a lot of mistakes being happening at the time. A lot of guys had come into maybe one barbecue from Argos or Aldi or Lidl or that and they couldn't cook uh, ribs on it for 16 hours and what means the names Carlos Carnivore <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst non-name drop I think you ever I know, yeah. that's <laughs> <laughs> and it literally that's all it was 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 a guy, one lot of guys just talking literally about barbecue it was crazy but I think it's also part of the time is that 
lots of people have just gone into lockdown and they've gone through this period of being in lockdown where they haven't seen their their normal friends or their associates or colleagues from work and and everyone kind of fell into this hobby or this passion of barbecuing fire cooking um uh, you know button pressing as Cork likes to call a certain select group of people with the pellet grill. I mean, but I mean, ultimately it's, it's being outside, enjoying things and doing what you love. Um, today I celebrate my, my 12 month anniversary of being on Instagram. So I didn't start an account until 12 months ago. Um, so I knew no one from th that point. Uh, and then to find a group of people that were like-minded, that were welcoming and wanted to talk about the same thing, I mean, what else could you ask for? Yeah. I, 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 yeah, we couldn't agree more. And it's something that we've mentioned on the podcast before is social media gets a bad rap, doesn't it? For, you know, troll, trolling, bullying. And actually, the, what I've really noticed is how embracing and welcoming the barbecue community are. Like you said, it's, yeah. it's grown massively over the last 12 months. But if you think most of us have never met each other and yet you talk to each other like you've known each other for 10 years and and you know everyone's just so friendly and actually they want to help each other out and you don't find that in many places i don't think on the internet and i think that's quite quite a special thing that's happening in the community i, I think probably the closest thing you could find is maybe like a fishing community and they kind of have the same thing but can you imagine it in 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 another niche or genre like fashion no. or boating or, or something like that it just it just wouldn't happen and I think that that's also the beauty of it and it's, I feel that I've learned a heck of a lot uh, my cooks are a lot better now um, than they were a year ago in saying that there are a few fails that are very recent <laughs> I cannot wait <laughs> to hear those fresh in the mind unfortunately um, but then you still live and learn from that right you don't just go I'm never doing that again um, you're actually how do I change that? How do I do that better? But, you know, the long and short of it, you know, the Sizzle Show started as a, it's just a way of Cork and I, I think, wanting just to, to talk about the community, right? Talk about what's going on in the barbecue scene and excuse for our faces to be online <laughs> every other week, once a month. I think that was the plan in the beginning, right? None of the T-shirts, yeah. none of the banners, none of this was there. No, no it really was. The Sizzle Show just came around basically off the back of I mean, I had Duchess over. I had to on a golf maybe few more months before James came on Instagram. I actually did a barbecue course with a, a guy called uh, James Barbecue, Barbecue, Barbecue on Instagram. And I was just, I just followed him through Twitter. And I know Bill did the course as well. And I did the course and like it, it went from literally doing burgers to to my first proper cook was uh, Bee Cheeks. And... Oh, it was like, it was a whole like Instagram only this real small small community of maybe seven eight guys that were passing on advice and trying to help each other and support each other, and it was this great time. And I jumped onto Instagram and I just posted one picture and I followed Jimmy Gilmaster and at the time he had thousands of followers and I entered his giveaway. Now he messed it up because he never said UK only, right? <laughs> and it was look, it was lot of there was a lot of rocket chip sauces and a lot of sauces and stuff. And like never forget it. And I won and I went wow. This is so easy. Just put your name in. <laughs> you win a prize. Because <laughs> he said to me, where are you from? Cork in Ireland. He went, oh no. <laughs> I can see his face. Like, I think the shipping cost more than the prize at the time. No, he compared to GB. He did not renege in the prize. But it, it, it was my first induction in Instagram. And all of a sudden, this guy was talking to me. And he had thousands of followers kind of going, wow, this is crazy that guys would actually... You were kind of straight looking up to him. You took, he was kind of, for me, a top guy at the time. And you look up to him and he answered any question. And all of a sudden, I met Paul and I met James. It's crazy how just, I can't blow up, wrap my mind how the whole thing just kind of blew up over 12 months. It really, it's crazy. So uh, with the Sizzle Show at the moment, you're, you're, do, you're doing quite a lot of segments, aren't you? You've got your regular show, but I've seen that you've got quite a lot of off, you know, kind of off shoot segments. So are you, are you guys literally, re you know, recording or, or videoing every day? You must be, it's almost like a full-time <laughs> job for you two now, isn't it? It feels like it's some weeks when we, we go through the schedule and we go, yeah, oh yeah, we've got this on, on Tuesday. Oh yeah, but I've got that on Wednesday. 
oh yeah, what about that thing on Friday and Saturday? And you're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is a busy week. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, you know, that's also, I think you guys also get it as well, is that scheduling wise, trying to get people at a time and a place is tough. And then to mm-hmm. do it live as well, um, we kind of have to just make sure that we're ready so that when everyone else is, we can we can make that happen. Yeah, it started off with the two of us talking. Uh, literally, we went to talk about barbecue, what, what, what was new coming yeah. out, <clears throat> new recipes, kind of. New coast of watch, and all of a sudden we discovered that no one was doing what we do with uh, Ben uh, Butcher Tindale. Ben, no one was doing what he was doing with him. Even before that, actually, I was actually just even thinking about it and remembering it. Do you remember the first one? We did the pilot with GB Grillmaster. Yeah. And then we had the, someone mention about video in screen. So you could show a video, video. whilst yeah. being in the video. Um, and we're like, wow. Let's do that. Yeah. So we actually did the, the first <laughs> segment um, where we were doing reviews of new equipment, a new kit coming out, uh, and we will show the video. And I think also it's, it kind of broke ground because no one else was doing that, right? They were doing lives, they were having conversations, but no one actually put that extra element in on top. Um, no. I think that, that kind of changed it a little bit more. No, that was, that was it. it, it it did change right. an awful lot, James, after that point. did. And as you yeah. said, there's a lot of segments, but the segments come out from, I suppose, talking to people and asking people what they want to see and the feedback we get. We try to produce the show based on it, whether it be cooking with cork, where they got to do three or four episodes to cook with Sue Storman, uh, Country Wood Smoke and, and Greg Emerson, or maybe what James does with Grilling Air. It, it literally is yeah. a what the public want, and we try to build something around it, whether it, it's a game show or whether it's an interview. You seem to be picking up traction, you know, all the time. Like you said, you've, you didn't expect to be sat here and you've got your, your banners and your, your, you've got your T-shirts there. It just, and obviously Sizzle Fest, which is something I want to come to uh, it, it, it shortly, but where, where, what's next for you guys in, in regards to the Sizzle show? Where, where do you go from here to here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've we been lucky as we kind of got contacts along the way. Um, yeah. We're still going to keep on producing the Sunday sizzle. Um, that's our mainstay. And even as you've seen, a, a lot of these offshoots are actually segments from within the Sunday sizzle itself, where people have really enjoyed it. So we've kind of expanded upon that and given them their own show. Um, and I think that that's what we want to keep on doing. We want to keep on telling the story of the community. Now, the community's got bigger, so it's not just about backyard barbecues anymore. Let's have the conversation of how do we get our food? How is it um, prepared? And how, how can we cook it? And go all the way through. I think that's, for, for me, especially personally, I would like to explore more um, and you know and find more about people within the community because that's the real story. Yeah, the story is, is about the community, always has been about the community. And as I said, James, it's not about me or James. It's about what's out there, trying to reach the people whether it be a count, whether it be young Alfie and what he's doing and, and bringing him along with the show, or reach out to Marcus or DJ Barbecue and so what he's doing. So it literally is trying to reach everyone in that community and give them a chance to, to put a voice out there and give them the exposure that they deserve and they need to help their accounts grow. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And that's essentially what we're trying to do as well, you know, just have that real story about people that actually make up that community and you mentioned yeah. Alfie uh he's a legend such a he's going to be the future of barbecue we've we've uh, we've had a recorded an episode with Alfie um and he was on top form um so and that, that's actually coming out next week so it's amazing yeah. well, I think you know that's he, also the great thing as well that he the first ever live that Alfie did was with Cork and Cork brought him on live and said not so because Cork brought him live that you know but it's also giving people the confidence to, to have that conversation online with other people so um I'm guessing Cork you and Hampshire hosted those lives for the first time for a lot of people right yeah. then on top yeah. of that um it gives people then just the ability to say do you know what it's not that difficult it's almost like talking on the phone it's, it's almost like just talking to a friend because that's kind of what it is yeah, a lot of it is, a 
a lot of the, the meat behind Instagram, I suppose, and put when I went live the first time, I said, people are they going to like me? Are they going to hate me? And either way, I'm going to know people are going to tell me the truth. It is, it is the internet and it is yeah. social media. And I expect this kind of backlash. Who's this Irish guy? What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> and I didn't get that. And that kind of, straight away, that kind of hit me kind of, whoa, this is something I crazy said it, here. I, I said it. I said, who's this Irish guy? What are you talking about? What did he you say? Still, uh, <laughs> you're still saying, I don't, I don't understand them. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like the new uh, Jeremy Clarkson on the farm. And he talked he talk to the guy to bring the walls. It was, I speak in jail with look and open his mouth and go, ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've had daily Irish lessons, can I say, um, over the last few months. It's got better. Much better. My daughter still can't quite understand him, but I can translate for her now. So, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> no, so that's 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 where it did start. And with Alfie, I suppose story with Alfie is I was speaking to Alfie's dad. I had seen, I spoke to him, and he he was at, he said Alfie would do love to do a live. And I said, look, he come on live with me, no problem. Unless they would cook. And for Alfie, thankfully, that has just exploded into something that that, that really is big for him today. I have seen he got his new. Commando, and he was cooking for team people there not too long ago. And he's a lot of sponsorship. And I know that Marcus kind of came in behind him and cooked with him. So, for us, we have to be it's have to take us from, from his back garden into this massive mega world of Instagram and beyond it for Alfie. I think then that it could I could see Alfie on and have his own show on on, on Discovery Channel or something like yes, you know, that's the way it's going to go. Oh, he's definitely got a bright future, yeah, absolutely. And again, actually, I think what the barbecue community and I think you guys might have been involved wasn't there a show uh, last year or a competition that was actually specifically designed ar uh, around children and getting them to, to to barbecue I can't remember it was kids 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 queue so I was That's I was it, an yeah. ambassador for uh, Spice Anarchy Rob's at the time and unfortunately they seem to have got into a bit of trouble and have come offline um, I know a small bit about it but like that they, they just got offline at the moment but I was talking to them and they were mad to launch a kids competition. So I did speak with them and help them kind of put the stuff together and set it up. So, and then they ran with what they had and launched this kids queue thing, which was, which fantastic for a couple of, for a couple of months. But I think that it was a lot of work in it and yeah. it was very hard trying to get people involved in it at the time because I think trying to get kids cooking a bar, kids cook food is one thing, kids cooking barbecue is a different story altogether. And where there is a great selection of kids doing it, it's still a very small and niche market at the moment because kids kids don't want they want to play in the PlayStation, not cooking food. So it's great to see all the kids from from Dicky Dick Brisket, Alfie, Smoke Bacon Meats, all these young people cooking on on the barbecue is crazy for me. It's it's something different. So yeah, I think it was a great it was a great concept, but I just think it was a very niche market and very hard to push it past where I went. Yeah, yeah definitely. So you've got some exciting news then. The Sizzle Fest. Yes, indeed. Tell, tell us about it. Sizzle Fest. Again, I think that opportunities more than anything else. We we were thinking about having a small gathering, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 people somewhere. And we thought, oh. where can we do this? Let's reach out to our good friend Charles and see what he's willing to do. And it's like, yeah, of course, no worries. Um but one conversation leads to another that leads to another, I think has, has really, yeah, taken all the focus that we've had on the Sizzle show and, and Sizzle um, all onto Sizzle Fest because we, I think we've just had the opportunity to work with some fantastic, fantastic brands um, to really put on a show. I think that's also part and parcel of it. Um, going up from, you know, the likes of Weber, Broil King, Traeger, Gosney, um, that want to come behind us and have some wacky, insane ideas. Uh, <laughs> there's a competition where you, you're going to have to ride a pink pig um, in order to potentially uh, walk away with one of the very best pellet grills in the market. I mean, where else can you do that? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. I'm there. I, I, yeah. I, I would have gotten that pick so much. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so, I think... <clears throat> Sorry, Cole. Sorry, James. Sorry, James. 
No, I say, and also, you know, so from that as well is that we, as it grew, we also had the opportunity to kind of put more and more into it as well. So we put a massive marquee, 30 meter by six meter. Um, we stuck a stage on there as well. Um, got some great bands lined up. So full on Americana. I think that's, the, <laughs> we're not going to be singing. So I think that's okay. I don't know if that's going to help people. Uh, I'm, I'm, people. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going. If you two are not singing, I'm not going. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. We'll be dancing. No. Oh, okay. That's um, fair enough. No. Yeah. So, you know, um, but 12 hours of entertainment that we've got lined up. Um, there's a butcher challenge series that we've managed to hook in as well. So three time challenges from three very, very good butchers. And they're going to showcase their knife skills um, what they're all about from precision challenges where they have to cut ribeye steaks into an inch and a quarter, exactly an inch and a quarter to count, um, breaking down pig belly or half a lamb in a very short space of time, you know, showcasing skills to us as, as a general barbecue, but then also at a high level enough that a butcher can also stand there and go, wow, that's really, really cool. Uh, and again, it's about giving people that inspiration. Um, we've got cooking classes um, where you can go along and take part in the Weber Grill Academy. So that hands-on experience to, you know, sitting with Bacoa, where they've got this gigantic hammer forge beast that's going to be smoking away. Um, we have so many grills. Um, the dome is going to be there. So the Gosney Dome will be there live and in person. And I don't think I've told you yet, Cork, but one of the prizes, yeah. Gosney are going to be doing something fantastic. <laughs> Can I yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah, I thought, I, was gonna get, I thought we were going to get an exclusive then. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the Gosney <laughs> Dome will be there live and in person. Fantastic. So, um, <laughs> and whether that stays there at the end of that night, we don't know. We no, just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it isn't that another barbecue festival, as you would it's probably not. know. It. We are looking, we're not trying to compete with Bitopia. We're not trying to compete with Sizzle Fire. We're looking because we can't. Yeah. Well, we could if we could ever get tried. No. But we're trying to take what we do on the show and the different segments and take it and put it on stage yeah. for the day. So you're going to have this little show, you're going to have Tosti Thursday on tour, you're going to have Grilling Air live with James, you're going to have uh, Ask Me Anything, q and A's. everything you see, what we try to do live, we're going to try to do over 12 hours <laughs> live again in a car park. <laughs> it's all live, so, live. <laughs> live, live, live. So there's going to be plenty, there's going to be plenty of cock ups, mess ups, and just complete crazy, stupid things happen. But the idea is to create a whole new. I suppose a whole new and whole new festival and a whole new idea for everyone to come to every summer, and yeah. hopefully yeah. they can grow bigger and bigger. That's what the and bringing for us is bringing all the guys that have been cooking online. They've been, as you said, talking to them, and a lot of people have become their best friends. James, Paul, yeah. Tom, Barbecue, people that because they're really good friends that they can go and talk to them about anything now, just outside of even outside barbecuing. To get all these guys in one place is the, is the aim of this. Really, is the, that's the whole culture behind it. Um, if we gathered just 50 people together, I think it would have just been a shame. Um, so we've done this. Uh, we're, again, so happy to have the contacts, but we've had to source absolutely everything, going out to a marquee company, getting stage rental, um, begging, borrowing, and stealing whatever we can do to make it happen. Um, but, you know, it's break even at very, very best. Um People in the events industry will tell you then, of course, year one, we talk about this and that, you know, you're never going to really aim for those things. And we definitely don't want to make any money in year one. It, it's not about that. And, and in, if no. I look at the cost per head <laughs> with the amount of limited people that we do have available to, to come to Sizzle Fest, I think it's impossible for anyone. If I, if I told them the cost, they'd be like, nah, I'm not going. <laughs> if I even told Cork, we'd be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. There was, there was times there, and I, I, we give, I must give credit to Big Nose Barbecue, that he, yeah. he's part of the park team, and he did a lot of the groundwork with, with James. And so he did a lot, a lot of groundwork with Charles and James in the background, and 
James would ring me and say to me, it's costing 5,000. Next thing, it's costing double. And next thing, it's going up and up. And I kind of go, oh, oh, no, where are we going to stop? Like, how are we, go- how are we going to pull this thing off? And it, it, it's thanks to the sponsors, it's thanks to Charles and all kind of things, to everyone coming together. It, it's going to be one epic day. Like, it really is a... I'm so excited for it to happen. For everyone, not just for myself and James, to get to meet up finally, but to meet everyone and see this... Yeah. Nothing pulled off today. It's going to be crazy, and yeah, and I think, yeah, with that as well, it's also the, the entertainment that we wanted to put in. That just that it yeah. wasn't about us again. So it wasn't just about come along and see us on on stage and do the things that you've seen anyway, because you can do that in the comfort of your own home. That's that's not a problem, right? It's about like the sticker swap station, um, where again we joke about it, but it's probably going to be the biggest barbecue community sticker swap that's ever happened. Because it's never happened beforehand, <laughs> for one. <laughs> but, um, you know, where we've also um, drafted in the Flying Iron Company, who are going to run an axe-throwing tournament for us. Um, so yeah, everyone I... that, that takes part um, gets the chance to throw some axes and, so, and to win some great prizes. And then and you have women and go won. really well together. <laughs> yeah, they do. I didn't. They do very, very well. <laughs> yeah, I want. I want two axes. Give me two of the Yeah, give me two of the beer. But I have a hat. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and then you have got Wave Fifty One coming in for the chili competition. So I mean, we're going to see people. Yeah. We've got people push the extreme of eating chilies. Uh, James is one, I can tell that James will be doing that. Mate, I will go as red as your beard. No, I mean, like that. <laughs> I don't think that's, that's the something that we should see. Um, I, I, I want to see it because I want to see stuff come out your nose. Yes. <laughs> I, really I know you do. <laughs> it's like sweat coming down. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, even like Yeti, who um, are getting in those slick horns where you can lasso one of the Yeti boxes um, and win some great prizes. They're making like a base camp. Um, where you can you know, just chill out down to Calagas, who are doing this this lovely lounge for people with all these patio heaters and you get some coffee and you can just chill out. Um, and I think that that's what we tried to make the day as comfortable for everyone as possible. Not to mention the the, the barbecue wonderland that is SoCal Barbecue Shop. Yeah, I, I think it's obviously a great idea that you've you're essentially wanting to make a. Obviously, you're already doing the live shows through Instagram, but making it interactive, um, I suppose you're, you're just taking it to that next step, aren't you? I'm asked how you're going to go from here to there, and I suppose the Sizzle <laughs> Fest is, is very much that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the last, since we started October, every time Seven J will speak, it's like one out of one of us would hit, hit this magic idea and say, let's, let's do this, right? And, of course, we're often waiting for the other person to say, no, it's not possible, right? What happens is go, people go, yeah, that's a great idea, right? And all of a sudden, in the two of us are there trying to wonder what the hell are we after suggesting and how are we going to do it? So, I mean, what is the next thing after Little Fest? I don't know because of Team 7 GMs every day, there's these crazy days come out and literally is, it's never, no, we can't do it. It's, yeah, we can do it. It's just how we're yeah, going to do it. It is. Like, so, you know, we've got the opportunity to film some pilots in the end of this year as well. Um, again, focusing around the barbecue community seeing how we can also elevate that. Um, people wanting to build shacks and how can we help that process happen? I mean, it's, since we started, we've given away how many barbecues now, Cork? 15? 15 barbecues. Also, I mean, like, it's... Crazy. Um, from Traegers down to Master Touches, Gosney Rock Gosney. Boxes, um, even, you know, with Commando Kings. Um, yeah, it's That's even... Oh, that's, the thing with the, that's the thing with the Sizzle Show. It hasn't been about myself and James trying to get, and I've asked this for ourselves, i got something free for ourselves, it's about trying to get the companies to give something to the community. And that's what, that's, when you say 15 barbecues, the minority or stuff that has been given away, it's, a, it's absolutely crazy because myself and James could be more, just, we could have said, oh, we're going to do this now, and we're going to try to become ambassadors for all different companies, and we could keep it. And it's literally, no, let, let's ask them for a free barbecue, so come out of King's, when they came onto the store, I hit them up and said, lads, can we get a free barbecue? And they went, for who? I said, for the community, for people that are following us. And, oh, yeah, no problem. Smoking soul. Boom, there you go. Got the rock box. There you go. 
they all want to, they would draw looking for a platform, which now is the little show, thankfully, to, to give the free products out to the community. It's not about ambassadors, it's about giving their stuff out. And say thanks to the community for supporting them and helping them build their businesses abroad too. No, exactly that. And I think that that's also where I think I feel it's been fantastic because we have been able to give back so much to, to these people supporting as well um, at the same time. Um, but even, you know, the sizzle store, that was an idea that we had just before Christmas, right, Paul? That we yeah. said to ourselves that, you know, there's people within the group, within the community that were selling their own rubs, sauces and stuff. Um, but they were then saying, yep, uh, I'll take the order, just DM me on Instagram and then PayPal me afterwards. And we're like, surely there's a better way of doing that. There's got to be something there that we can do together that kind of means that, you know, we've got a website anyway. Let's let's process that payment for people. Um, you know, something that I've done in the past um, and something we could execute really, really easily um, to where we are today where, yeah, it's, it's so crazy to think that we've probably got more brands on available in the Sizzle store than most other barbecue retailers. I want to say the word, the magical word, probably, <laughs> that probably am wrong, but I mean, like it's um, you know working with SoCal plus our other brands on the side as well have yeah. meant that we're able to, to stock the the entire range of Weber when it's in stock. Uh, um, Broil King, um, Traeger, um, Gosney, I, you know, and let alone the the Bacoa range with Hammer Forge, Hellraiser. Um, so it's fantastic to see. Um, that, that people are also willing, people have been buying barbecues uh, and charcoal um, with us over the course of this year. And it's surprised us, Cork, right? Still, every yeah, single time. It, is. it does. And again, it's just onto that whole barrack, what we started off with, the barrack community, we know people following us or people kind of coming behind us. Has been, we have changed for the concept, but the concept is nothing without followers, as you know, and without structure and, and people coming behind us, support whatever you do. And it's amazing. It's amazing that people do it every every week. People come behind us, and you get new followers and companies, especially coming and go. Yeah, we want to. We want to be part of this, and we want to help you. So yeah. it, it is about the barbecue community. In the day, it, it has been, or will be. For for me, it's, my own page was about building friendships with the barbecue community, but this is the show really is taken to the next level. So I'm interested. So I'm interested to. I think that's the right attitude, sorry, first and foremost, uh, um, ab about doing it for other, other people. And I think that's why brands are more excited to obviously work with you. I think if, if, if it is about, look at me, look at me, I, I, I want to be, I, I'm not sure it gives the right message off. So I think that's that's definitely the right attitude to, to have. And I think that's obviously why you guys are so successful. And obviously you've got, you know, uh, great personalities and you, you're doing a really, really good job. On the 20th to the 22nd of August, the UK's largest barbecue festival will be hitting Colchester for three days of all things grilling, music and family fun. And if that wasn't enough, the British Barbecue Open Championships will be held there, where teams will compete in numerous rounds of barbecue classics for the panel of judges to crown the best British barbecue team. To find out more and get your tickets, visit smokeandfirefestival.com slash tickets. We can't wait to see you there. What me, what... I'd like to know is a little bit more about you guys personally. So obviously we spoke a lot about the sizzle show now, but yeah. what about you guys as, as, as you know, back barbecuers, you know, what, what are you guys set up at home? You know, what, what, what grill space do you have? Do you have some elaborate shacks and 50 barbecues yourselves or are you more <laughs> low, low key than that? We're, we're, we're probably, we're probably the worst off two guys. <laughs> the it's like mechanics in their own cars, right? I think that's the worst thing about it more than anything else. No, so um, in all fairness, I've stayed with the same setup that I've had for uh, maybe like six, seven, I would say even before yeah, eight years now. <laughs> um, I've had it all the way through. So I, you know, I cook it, I've got a gas Weber and then I've got uh, charcoal that I use as well. Um, so basically I've got the charcoal so that cork doesn't give me abuse uh, on a regular <laughs> basis I think that's uh, the key thing but you know basic but the, oh, for me ultimately is I, I'm a father that cooks just a dad that does dinner and and I've always done that I've done the majority of the cooking in the house 
uh, and I've always loved barbecuing um, and spending time in front of the grills. But it, it was never really beforehand. I've done the odd rib cook and a few of the low and slows um, and, and the brisket maybe once beforehand um, before joining this crazy community. But not really knowing the, what I should go through, not knowing the basics, um, but just having at it. Uh, so I, you know, my stuff, my setup hasn't changed. I know the court, you got a few bits along the way as well, right? Yeah, well, I started off with a car cooler that I got out of um, the rain store. Now, before that, I would have bought stuff from like every guy out of Argus or, or one of the garden stores, one of these cheap kind of half barrel things that would the ass would burn out after 12 months. You light a barbecue and all of a sudden, all the charcoals on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. We've, all, I, we've all been there with that one. And then I kind of got a few power and we bought a char griller, which was kind of a big step up for me. It had ceramic grates. It actually had a proper uh, area for the charcoal in the bottom. And then a spot of smoking salt here in Ireland doing, doing the barrel, what they call the every, the every man now. So I ended up getting one of them off smoking salt. And just recently... I managed to get a, a an ugly bar smoker from a guy here in Northern Ireland. So I'm not really I've never kind of looked at the the the, the Webers and the Gazi stuff. It's kind of it's all it's kind of nearly looking at outside the target or is looking for guys local guys building barbecues and trying to support a smaller company. Again, it's a big eat as a mind is trying to support it, especially for meat wise, it's supporting butchers and greengrocers. But that's what I why so I have to I have the target or which uh, the smoke so I do and the ugly bar smoker and you know what I, I'm done at that I'm not really looking to, to extend that anymore I'm happy for that yeah I give pedicures and gas grills and I give them an offer to do easy bake ovens right but we all spoke a barbecue is for your family and what, what, what you need and it really is if you I know a GB Grandmaster he's a real busy life a lot of kids to the Traeger I spoke to him he can turn a Traeger on and he's cooking He's cooking within 10 minutes, that trigger hits the heat and he's got wings on. Where you go, I go to the smoke soil unit, I go to light it up. An hour later, that thing is only still hitting temperature. And it, that's the difference. <laughs> that is the difference, I suppose. Yeah. If, if, if you have yeah. time to do it, that's great. If you don't, well, then the trigger or the gas bill is, is a, a great alternative. Or the new master build, the gravity fed master build is another great alternative to that. So yeah. Yeah. It, it, everyone has a barbecue for everyone, really. But all you can also see on is that we're also very different, right? And we, with me and my complete Weber setup from the Genesis to the Master Touch down to the Go Anywhere. Um, and Cork is then, you know, locally built stuff, um, hand forged in the fires of Ireland. Um, <laughs> I think that that's also very different. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever seen you with a light on, by the way, Cork. You looked a lot younger. Can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm, I start, I start to laugh at Brian outside and casting like Cox is getting darker by the second because it's been too last rain from, from the hornet. We're sitting here by the window, the clouds getting darker and darker. It's, I can see myself disappearing. I thought you were going to put the pennies in the meter again. <laughs> <laughs> winding down, though. Um, no, no, no that's, the, the dogs are trembling outside running and trying to keep the How to eat some more carrots, mate? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still cook. I'm probably cooking more now than than I've ever done um, beforehand. Um, I did take a break. I must admit, like going through the winter was tough. Um, if we're going a little bit personal now, like I found it tough to to have to kind of. I felt like I needed to keep up doing cooks on a regular basis. Young family, busy life, and everything going on. And I actually just sat there uh, to my, and looked at myself just before Christmas. And I was like, do you know what? There, there's actually no point in doing this. Because why are you doing it? Are you doing it for you? Are you doing it for someone else? If you're doing it for someone else, there is zero point in making it happen. Um, yeah. Can you just enjoy the stuff that you, that you do? And sometimes I'll just make fantastic food, but they're not kind of Instagram ready, right? And, and you know, some bits don't look so right there. I won't put it on. But then again, I'll just, you know, I won't stress about it either. I'll just say, that's okay. It happened. Um, it's just not one for today. Let's just tuck in family. 
Um, don't get me wrong. There's also points in time where I just say, you're not allowed to eat yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, I suppose for me, I don't have a shack. Um, that's not going to happen anywhere near the future. So the outdoor, outdoor, literally outdoor kind of, when the camera comes on, take off the jacket, take off the hat and smile and say, welcome to Costa del Car. In the rain, it's really no. He's a cat, 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 <laughs> yeah. <let> go. <laughs> so, if you want to set up a go for me page for for cork for cork, for cork, please do cork for cork. <laughs> yeah. I can see you can see it now, like um, I suppose. That, yeah. that's, I think that will be the hashtag for this uh, this episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hashtag coat for cork. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if uh, I suppose my barbecue journey started, I suppose like that on the old barbecues, um, mm. bitter. As I spoke, uh, Barber to James, he was advertising for his, uh, he was a virtual course, and this was a whole new concept again, doing a course, on, uh, doing a barbecue course online, how could he run it, was it going to be successful, and a couple of, a couple of guys took the plunge and said, yeah, we, we, we went part of this, and we got involved, he, he also brought in um, Jim phone, he slagged it in as well, as a kind of a guy, just in the background to see, make sure everything, and basically what... James Dunn was every week he would he would send out a recipe card with a method on it with a kind of so it would if it holds up the barbecue um the temperature should be running at what you needed to make the recipe so it was all very very simple recipes but there weren't burgers there weren't sausages he was taking it up into, into chicken satay into taking into all the way he took it all the way literally up to pulled pork so he did all these small meals that you could prepare for family and start to make, that's where the light bulb for me kicked in, kind of, the barbecue wasn't just big time meat in the barbecue anymore. It literally was, you could cook a whole meal for your family and you could actually put massive flavour into it, in, in, into this piece of chicken or a bit of beef and turn it into something that you, you'd see in a restaurant or in a, in, a, in a food stall or in a food truck. And you could literally, you could do this in your comfort of your own home. And when James did that with us, it, I think for myself and I think Bill and I, it just blew our minds that we all of a sudden we we can actually cook real good food and barbecue with little hassle. So he kind of revolutionized. He was the first person I see use uh, social media, and it was a, a Discord group he set up, and it, he he used these cards. I said to to run this whole barbecue school, and it, I know it was a huge success for him. I think it ended up last year. I think he stopped it last year because work so busy with him. But I think he's after having 60 guys with the course from over over 18 months, which is crazy, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic achievement for him. Yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it, about barbecue? Uh, it's so <laughs> versatile and there's no reason that, that you can't cook anything on there, anything at all. Anything you can put in an oven or on a grill or on a hob. You, you can cook in a barbecue or in a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> What's one of them? <laughs> I, yeah, I, There's outdoor I, versions I, you can press buttons with and they smoke up. Ah, <laughs> right, sure. <laughs> but little wood things. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, 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 easy, they're easy bake ovens, James. Easy bake ovens. <laughs> <laughs> easy bake ovens. <laughs> uh, I think uh, one of the big moments for me to see that actually happen was when myself and Paul did the ribs and sides, but we did one where we did a roast dinner. The Sunday roast, and like right. they were part of that, and we did this whole Sunday, and we did the roast dinner, and to see the amount of stuff that people actually cook the barbecues, it, it literally the people yeah. to the start our main and dessert on the barbecue that Sunday, just for the laugh of it, and everyone roast potatoes. There was nearly a battle of Yorkshire puddings on it. I mean, it was absolutely mental. Every, everything was cooked in the barbecue that day, and it just it again, as you said, it just showed everything could be cooked. From your Sunday roast right down to something real exotic like James's real real your, your uh, ribs there the other day James were amazing all together. Ah, uh, the sh the um, Shanghai short ribs. Yeah, they have nothing to do with Shanghai. That was the only Chinese <laughs> uh, city that that rhymes with short ribs. 
So I apologize to the <laughs> continent of Asia for just plagiarizing, um, but I've got a race card somewhere. So I, I, I used it. So. <laughs> um, one of the things I also wanted to pick up uh, with Cork is barbecue wars. You've been doing barbecue wars every Wednesday for <laughs> what well, seems uh, years. Uh, yeah. as well, yeah, so. it, feels like, it feels like years. <laughs> Do you know what? That game, that was, that was a crazy time with Tom. I had done maybe one or two lives. I think my first of lives with GB Goodmaster. He was doing. He was an art. He was an art in barbecue world. He was doing um, Traeger Day, and on the Traeger Day, he, he, I was sitting at home here. I was at the back. I had a spat caught chicken on and a few sausages on. On, on the char griller and Nixon, he, he see watches and jump on live and Nixon, here I am live with, with Jimmy Goodmaster and I kind of going, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? And uh, again, Gary was so song and everything and I kind of, I kind of went, okay, we, this live thing is kind of, it's kind of cool. We, you know, we, we got to see, I got to speak to, to Gary and see something different and I said to Tom one Wednesday, I was at home here, I, was, I actually don't forget it, I had a uh, million stakes and I said to Tom, I'm going to go live in a minute with some minute steaks. I'm going to throw them on the barbecue. You were doing a come on for a quick chat on Wednesday. And he goes, yeah, let's do it. He was inside the kitchen cooking chicken. And I was inside in the barbecue cooking minute steaks. And then we, kind of said, we said the following week, let's do that again. But let's do something similar. So I think it was burgers. And then we did chicken wings. And then we did these chicken wings. And I did a white Alabama sauce. And everyone said, who won? We were doing who when there was no there is no winner. There's just we're just cooking for the sake of cooking, and everyone goes, no, no, there has to be a winner. You did you did chicken wings, Alabama sauce, chicken wings, and he just did chicken wings, and there has to be a winner. So like, hence barbecue wars came out in the back of that. Tom, Tom completely for weeks fought me and going, we're not doing this. This is not going to happen. Like <laughs> I just kept I kept from walking at barbecue wars. We kept putting the votes until Tom said. <laughs> All right, we'll call it call it barbecue wars. <laughs> so you didn't even get permission from him. They just jumped in on his foot. Come on, Tom. We got the people who wanted Tom. We got to do with him. Like Tom is such a, it's the nicest guy out there. It really is. And I go on and I give him a heap of abuse. And, he just, and we, we talk afterwards, and he just laughed so much. He just can't. It. I wouldn't get away with it with anyone else. It. It would never happen with anyone else because Tom is just. It became such a a natural progression from cooking food to slagging each other off and having a laugh and having a beer. Sometimes there's not even food cooked. We will, we will finish up and the food is still inside. The food, the food is still inside, still inside the barbecue behind us. I mean, that was a Sue Storm and thanks to for her KID with cakes. Like it, hours and hours later. And I was you don't blame Sue. Right. <laughs> That's all I can say, right? Yeah, well, we should be... I learned... Go cook cakes in the middle of winter unless you've got to come out of jaws with that taking really take the heat. Not even that. Didn't you do a live with her like two weeks ago? I did a live with her, yeah. And yeah, yeah, you, and did, you took the butter out of the fridge, it sat on the side, and it yeah. started to kind of soften. But then you took it outside, outside and it started to again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so here I am, trying to mix this butter and it's not. Yeah, here I get a good. <laughs> and a big stand mixer, and I can see nothing but butter rolling around the side of this thing, and I'm going to go. This isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. We can put the slab of butter. It's in the middle of the pan. I was smiling at the screen, kidding with, yeah, so it's all okay. <laughs> I knew it was. I, I, I already knew. But like you guys caught, you kind of, you know, you, you've literally done it for so long, you lost your hair and it grew back again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that was another stupid moment we were live and Rob watched us. I always said we shave our heads for Rob for six hour live. The other stupid moment. See, that's what happens at barbecue wars. I have two beers before I go live, and then we have another six or seven live, and all of a sudden these great ideas come on and over. Let's do this. And of course, once we said we live, once we said it live, we had to do it. And you know what? It was it was a, actually I spoke to Rob uh, the other day. It was a it was a I more than I was delighted to be part of something that big, that big charity for Rob and be involved. And look, if my seven Tom shaving her heads, great if you fantastic. I hope it did. But it was great to be part of something and raise money for a fantastic charity. So can uh, can we expect a live barbecue wars challenge at Sizzle Fest? <laughs> that has been spoken about, but I don't think Tom's going to let me say for Tom abuse the public. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I don't think our temporary event notice allows that much level of abuse to the uh, general public. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so it's an insurance thing. It's an yeah, insurance thing. Exactly. Um, I, can't, I, can't I can't stand on stage and go, and you're a... And you're a... <laughs> I won't tell the word, but you know what like I'm going evil with Oprah. This. You're a... You're a... <laughs> hey, Keep what's that? Yeah, kids are my head. Hey, see you. Your dad's there. And your mom's there, right? <laughs> so, I don't think Charles, that would help Charles on the city show, so no. It's not going to help sell infused. barbecues, unfortunately, so I don't think that's going to be no. Really, no. <laughs> so they won't be an infused uh, barbecue wars. Perhaps that's the after party. That's the after party yeah. somewhere. Maybe in a hotel. Yeah. We, let, we let fire to a chair or something like that with steaks over it. <laughs> Do a live stream, like everyone. Be careful in your shopping carts. We're just about to buy some new disposable barbecues. <laughs> so when when Cork says he went to Costco and he got some barbecues, just double check where he got them from first, okay? Charles going to lock up well today because if he doesn't, then there will be barbecue wars. Quite literally, I'm just speaking so loud. Running down with the running down with the head of the web or the. Her towers hit people or something like that, like it's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we've we hold very dear here at the Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast is barbecue fails. We're we're super interested in finding out. You know, we see all these lovely things on social media, and we know that there's probably a few attempts before it reaches social media. So uh, I'm, I'm really interested to hear from you guys. What what what's your latest barbecue fails, or any any particular ones you want to share with us and the community? That's really nice of you to say latest, because that kind of like, you know, just, just in case there, there could have been beforehand, you just don't know. Right? <laughs> it could have been the first one, though. No. Uh, I can lead off with this because mine's pretty fresh in the memory, um, in that, you know, I think that we forget to maintain our grills because we probably grill on them more often than not. Um, you know, I just got a new grill pan, um, so a plancher style that I can put onto the gas grill. And I've been, you know, using it happily, frying up bacon and all these other lovely bits. But this particular cook that I wanted to do, I was like, do you know what? I, I'm going to just turn it over. I want the other side of the plancher. It'll be fine. And, you know, I think it was a, an Indian cook that I was doing. So it wasn't like a lot of grease. It was still hot and fast. But at one point, <laughs> everything just went completely up in flames like <laughs> full-on fat fire um i knew there was nothing i could do so I, you know i took everything off and uh, and 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 kind of took all the meat off um the plant was a lot heavier than i remembered i must admit just full of meat like swinging around the ground walking to the neighbor like do you have a, a fire extinguisher by any chance i was okay because you know i i knew that technically it would die down it was just very very big she didn't realize this. <laughs> she ran around her apartment trying to find the fire extinguisher, running out with it afterwards. Um, yeah, it's one of those scary moments where you kind of just forget and go, yeah, actually, even on a gas grill, you've got to look after your stuff. You've got to treat it with care. Um, and you can't miss the steps. Yes, you're going to build up seasoning and all, all this other stuff. But clean the grease trap out. <laughs> Take care of that bottom of that grill. Um, you know, how, how did the food turn out? Catch you. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> it was just underdone uh, before the fires came in, but I mentioned take everything off, foil it all up. Um, I went into the oven um, just to keep warm at that point whilst I was waiting for everything to subside. Um, but then again, I think I, it's the confidence that I've had of cooking constantly on fire over this last year for me not to just poo my pants and go oh my god what do I do and also the nuance not to spray the fire extinguisher on the grill because that's a lot more to clean up <laughs> <laughs> and if and I left it it was doing the cleaning for me and no burns so, no burns uh, you know a couple of times I lifted the, the hood and went oh no <laughs> no air <laughs> <laughs> But it's only the gas grill that I've ever had trouble with. Um, yeah. I think it's just the, the complacency that sets in sometimes. And, and you kind of, you know, you kind of, I think, have this arm's length between that, that fire touching element because it is kind of shielded and away and it's heating up the grates in a more scientific way. 
as opposed to food flame. Uh, and you can see that direct connection. So, you know, massive fat fire is the last one for me. Um, food turned out right. I've got plenty more where the, you know, the food didn't turn out right, but that wasn't my latest. So that's how okay. I'm going to go off with that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and what about um, yourself, Cork? Yeah, I suppose there's, I have a fail and I have a confession to make. So we go with the fail first. Right? <laughs> <Confession. laughs> You're pretty <laughs> good, Traeger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose when I got the smoke console unit, I started looking more into into getting wood and getting away from charcoal and getting away from no wood and try cooking with actual t proper timber over fire, kind of and cook food over fire or with timber. And I managed to get my hands on some 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 of this uh, real good South African wood, Camadora, and I got this and spoke to the guy that supplied. He said. When you put in force, this thing will get real hot, but the temperature will come way down. And when it comes down, then you're good to cook in it. So put in smoke as well, you know, and it lit this thing up anyway. And like you said, temperature shot way up into the air and came way back down. And I looked in the box and I went, I throw a small worm beside it, you know, this will be good. And this will cook the ribs. Put on three racks of ribs, close the lid. I said, there, I don't have to come back out for two hours. This is going to be okay. I came up to us later to find the temperature off the clock, right? And black smoke plummeting out of the thing. I opened up. Yeah, the ribs were done right. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were done. They were they were black. They were I literally I burned the ribs. I never I've never seen ribs like them. They hadn't even been sauced yet, and there was this texture of it as if someone had mop sauce and burned them on them like. And then we do when they did pick them up then you could actually you could use them as a uh, maybe a baseball bat or a Harley. They were that solid, like they just <laughs> completely, completely destroyed them. <laughs> But actually, actually, I was so I was so annoyed with myself, right? I actually went live afterwards to admit I actually had a fail in the barbecue. And again, it was Jay Brigham Master came live with me and said to me, fair juice for coming out and saying you 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 messed up, right? Yeah. But I felt I had to say it. Sometimes things don't go to plan. At this time was one of them. And I and we're putting the ribs up in the video and it, you couldn't even tell there were ribs. They were it's literally were destroyed like two hours in there. I had left oh. just uh, it was like something it, it was like so it's like someone burned the house down around and left the ribs in the middle of the burning house like <laughs> they were that bad like and I still smell, for you cook <laughs> and that smell I for you. <laughs> that smell was there for about two days in the barbecue in the barbecue oven I couldn't get rid of that burn smell. I was scrubbing and cleaning and no way could I get that burn smell out of it. It was it seemed to be just stuck to the barbecue so that's probably the worst Worst ever time I burned any food. Uh, no, the confession was. Wasn't um, even the latest. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, con the confession, the confession is what to do with. It's, it's, I didn't mess up technically. I just didn't give someone what they wanted. So what happened was, uh, remember the family said to me, Look, I want to have a barbecue. And I go, Yeah, yeah. And I want to invite all my friends and, and we're going to have a bit of a party here. And I said, Yeah, let's do it. And in the last minute, they said to me, oh, by the way, there's a vegetarian coming. And I went, oh, I don't do vegetables on the barbecue. Never did vegetables on the barbecue. Like, I did the Sunday dinner, but don't take vegetables on the barbecue for me. This was going to be a complete no-no. I had on the smoke and soil unit. We had burgers, we had ribs, we had pulled pork, we had, you name it. And we had, uh, we designed this menu around being 17, 18 people. And it was, next time someone came in, I said, and the vegetarian veg must come to an and went, oh no, that's going to be bad. So I would live when I was with uh, Barbecue Wars and I asked for recipes. And of course, the community came along and gave me all these fantastic recipes for, for a vegetarian. And I went, okay, we can, we can do something. To be told, no, she doesn't want any of that. What she wants is she's going to bring her own veggie burger and her own veggie sausage. She just want you to cook it on the barbecue. I went, oh, happy day. How bad could this be? <laughs> so... We went along and she came along and she said to me, this can't touch where the meat was. And I goes, this is okay. I said, I'm going to put foil on the meat or on the meat burger and this will never touch the grave where the meat was. And she was happy enough at that. So I put her, put her on, the, on the barbecue and I washed the cooking away anyway. And eventually I went, to, you know, I just put them into the back corner of the barbecue all the way and I closed it and leave them to start cooking in direct in the corner. Now, what I had built is, you see, as I had done about 15 Juicy Lucy burgers and I had put them all on the top shelf 
of the barbecue in the in the of. right hand corner, <laughs> in the right hand corner, and I put her two burgers and two sausages in the bottom right hand corner of the barbecue, not thinking about what was in the top right hand corner. I closed the barbecue. So 50, 30 minutes later, I kind of opened the barbecue anywhere and looked in and I went, oh no, you could see all this beef dripping all over the burgers and sausages. I went, oh no, what am I going to, what am I going to do here? So I turned around and said, do you want cheese and ketchup and, you know, oh yes, please. So I just got the burn, put the burger on it, got the cheese on it. Did you? <laughs> Did you? Throw the ketchup, boom, there you go. Here's the two hot dogs. So, so she was eating away and, she said, wow, this is absolutely amazing. She said, like, you know, <laughs> so I've, not, I've never actually had food that was this good. The burgers were this good. I said, what was the difference? So I thought it was a smoke, smokiness from the barbecue. It was all that flavour. Not the big lump of beef that was dripping on the floor for half an hour. You're an evil man. <laughs> You're a bad I, man. I, I, I would have so done the same, though. I would have absolutely done the same. To be fair, I wouldn't even have put the, t- I wouldn't even have put the tin foil on. I'd have been like, no, it's going on the grill whether you like it or not. <laughs> Yeah, but it's the same spatula as you're so. flipping everything with, right? It's the same spatula, the same tongs, it's the same. Yeah. Dude, dude, it's fair enough, right? I gave her being tipped with her, and I just used the same spatula, the same tongs, right? I mean, and it, when I say coming to beef drippings, it literally equivalent was because there was 15, never forget, 15 juicy Lucy burgers, all just dripping down on top of this. So it's, essentially, it was a beef burger when it was finished. Like, it had more beef in it than vegetables. I can tell you that now from the look of it. Man, does she not have the internet? Like, don't tell her you're on a podcast, by the way. Whatever happens, <laughs> right? Don't tell her that she's on a podcast. It's okay. She's not, she's not friends with our family anymore, so it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It doesn't matter if she finds out. No, <laughs> so that's a that's a con- that's a, that's a confession. That's what you do when when the biggest fears are right. Not thinking about the Man. vegetarian from that menu, but but you know. I feel, I, feel so that, funny. I can see that weight's come off your shoulders now. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the halo back in because there, there was a set of devil horns there for a long time. <laughs> the halo's back again, like. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it was, it was a, it was, it was, it was the moment she bit into the burger and I was waiting for her to say, there's beef on this. And she just smiled at me and said, this is so, so delicious. But what made it so different? I kind of, oh, it's the apple chunks. I said, the smoking, this is after getting into it. I said, and she just bought it and I went, this is fantastic. We can literally get away with anything <laughs> on the barbecue. <laughs> shocking. Absolutely shocking, Cork. So for this but, all, but, but also brilliant at the same time. Oh, brilliant, I know. I mean, <laughs> it, I deemed it a success. <laughs> <laughs> Great. One, one, of the, uh, one of the other things I wanted to, uh, to go through with you guys, and I don't know how we're going to do this, so normally we have one guest. So... We do a barbecue bingo challenge, which we like to set our guests each week. So we have a wheel that's got lots of different ingredients. We spin the wheel. We would love for you then to go away, cook that, uh, take a picture, tag us in on social, social media, mainly Instagram, uh, with the hashtag barbecue bingo. Um, so we could either do it with you doing the same cook or we spin it twice and you have an ingredient each perhaps and almost have our own little sizzle barbecue war. <laughs> let's, have the, let's have the same ingredient. I mean, I'm up for that, James. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it all right. starts. I mean, yeah, well, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You know, see, this is, this is how barbecue I'm... war started. James, you don't get a choice. <laughs> We're getting the same ingredient, right? And I asked you today, and I was okay. <laughs> right. I'll, uh, I'll share my screen with my really high tech board. You see that? Oh, fantastic. That's right. some technology right there. That is some technology. Again, uh-huh. that free, te- free veggie technology. Veggie meal on that cork. <laughs> <laughs> veggie meal. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to spin the wheel and we'll see what you get. So here we go. The anticipation this is killing me. <laughs> Jam. Oh. Jam. <laughs> so this is the first time this is this is the first time this has come up. Oh, so I hear baking. I hear baking. This is <laughs> this is a setup. This is definitely a setup. <laughs> oh, I'm really chuffed for that. This is such a setup. Like I, I want, I want my one ingredient. 
<laughs> so that's Cork's ingredient. What, what's going to be my one? <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your first thoughts then with, with okay. jam? Um, yeah, I, I have no idea. It's good. I'm going to have to go outside the box for this time. I'm not cooking cake. It's still not happening, okay? We love you too, but we're not cooking cake. I'm not going to cook cake. Damn, this is going to be... If it makes you feel a little better, Cork, I know exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> yes. No, it does. It does not James. <laughs> right? But James, like barbecue was, I've always told Tom, up to the last, the last hour, I've no idea what I'm doing. All of a sudden, then, boom, I turn up live <laughs> and something appears on the grill, right? I mean, we did armadillo eggs. I couldn't find it. I did look for armadillos around Cork. I really did look for armadillos. Right? <laughs> and then when I, when I found something look like look like an armadillo, I found out it couldn't lay eggs. Very disappointed. I had to Google it again afterwards to find out the armadillo eggs wasn't. There was no actually eggs in it. Like, armadillo, <laughs> crunchy on the outside, the outside soft on the inside. On the inside. <laughs> 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 the bear, uh, I thought I could. I thought I was running through my head when we said armadillo eggs. Was, uh, oh man, yeah, we'll do something with Jab. We will do. Fantastic. We will take. We will take the. We will take the challenge on. We'll we think will have this something. We will have a sure. barbecue wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this could be the summer start of something beautiful. Yo, how did the sizzle <laughs> show stop? Well, we did a podcast, and then we had to do something with jam. Uh, no, <laughs> and we didn't speak to her after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! Oh uh, well, dear. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you two on the show, um, and I have had such a good laugh. My my actual jaws are hurting, <laughs> <laughs> which is always which is always a good sign. Um, do you want to just tell everyone again uh, where to find the Sizzle Show, uh, where to find your your own social media uh, accounts, and and things like that? Where where can people find you and find your cooks? Yeah, so you know myself, I'm live to barbecue live underscore to underscore barbecue um you can find us all course at sizzle underscore show um or the sizzle show.co.uk um we're online as well um but otherwise than that sizzle fest hashtag sizzle fest keep an eye on, on what's going on we we're adding new things new guests new bits every single day at this moment in time so that's probably the best way of keeping track. Um, yeah, I think, you know, hook us up, find, you know, check out some of the old um, episodes that we've got. Um, otherwise, we're on every other Sunday, um, at the very least, even during the summer. Um, not with the sizzle, but with other shows intermingling as well. Yeah, so a hot barbecue, can't go wrong with a really, there, there you go. <laughs> and then uh, the sizzle, the sizzle show. Ah, look, it's been fantastic to come on and do the podcast. And uh, look, as always, James, I'd have to give credit to credit due for this little show and then uh, answer the first to, to Big Nuts Barbecue, Bill, Meat for Whiskey. Yeah. I mean, all the guys, there's a lot of stuff goes on in the background that people don't see on this little show. And there's a big team behind it there. And thanks to all the team that help us put the show every week on Charles. And in, in so Cali, he's been a real big supporter for us and pushing, pushing this little show for us and Sizzle Fest and to the other sponsors Global Arctic and uh, Smokers on Air Learn for coming behind us and starting having a belief in what we're doing and help us get this get, get this get this off the ground really. Great. Yeah. I'll tell you what, as I said, me, me and Dan have got tickets to, to the to the festival and uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting you two and having a beer in person. Oh, it'd be great. <laughs> First bit is on call. Hey, oh, hey. I, this no is problem. recorded as well, so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Charles. Charles, you know what to do, Charles. <laughs> we, 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 need, we need a bigger truck, Charles. We need a bigger truck. <laughs> the, corn, the, the corn truck is not going to be big enough, Charles. Everybody wants free beer. James, yeah. James, has, put it, James has put it into the budget. Everyone gets 10 free points. <laughs> what part of break even did I get? <laughs> break. I did, I did think we said it was last making for the first year, James. And, I mean... Oh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Break even year three. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for having us on. No, thanks no, very much, guys. It's been, been good yeah, it's been a pleasure. I'll catch up with you soon. Right, James, you're going oh, down. Thanks you're going going down. Jam, James. You're going down, James. You're going down. <laughs> yes. started. You're in a sticky situation, Cork, right? I'm going to be with it. Oh, no, I'm going to go down the jam route. James, right, you're, so going we'll down. you're going, we'll you're be, going uh, down, James. You're going down. <laughs>
That's it for another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. It was great to catch up with the Sizzle Show and discuss more about what the show is. Sizzle Fest, which is the first interactive version of their show in September, which is going to be absolutely amazing. Can't wait to go to that. Please check out their Instagram, uh, their website, The Sizzle Show, where you can see more about their Instagram shows. You can find more products and more importantly, you can find tickets to the Sizzle Fest. Um, please, again, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you and what you want us to talk about on the, uh, on the podcast. It's all about community. So get in touch with us through the website, meetandgreetbarbecuepodcast.com, through our Instagram accounts, Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast, through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, keep an eye out for what James and Cork Barbecue cook with jam on their barbecue bingo challenge. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for the next video that will drop shortly afterwards. Until next time, keep on grilling. Mm -hmm.